Hi guys and welcome back to another episode of Physics Explained. Uh, as promised this week we're going to be covering the speed camera, specifically we're going to be covering the radar cameras and they're the ones that you see in the big yellow boxes on the side of the road hanging off the back of motorway gantries and the ones the police use in those road safety vehicles. Um, mainly because they're the easiest ones that cause errors in speed measurements and also they're the most commonly used. I mean you see a police van twice a week at least if you drive around enough. Um, so yeah, we're going to cover how they work and how bad, just how bad they are at taking measurements of basically of you speeding. So what we're talking about today is the Gatso camera, the Gatso speed camera, and uh, it's highlighted here by the yellow box that you see on the side of the road. Uh, these were first introduced in the early 1990s and now you'll see them on motorway gantries and in the back of police vans mainly. Uh, and they use a, a radar system, and a radar system is essentially uh, electromagnetic radio waves. If we look at the electromagnetic spectrum, which ranges from anything from gamma waves to radio waves, what we notice is the wavelength gets shorter as we go down the spectrum. This also means that they have a low energy. Now this is perfect for use in radar systems as it means that it won't penetrate certain materials such as metals. That means it can be used to reflect off things like cars, ships, airplanes. A key aspect of a radar system is how well the radio waves bounce off the target object. Now this is governed by the radar cross section or RCS. There are four main things that govern an RCS factor. Uh, one is the size, naturally a larger object is easier to hit than a smaller object. Second is the background radiation in the atmosphere. This comes from things like mobile phones and radio stations that all use radio waves as their transmitting medium. Equally, the curvature of an object affects it as a curved object will reflect at different angles, not back at the transmitter. And finally, an electrically conductive material such as metal uh, is better at reflecting electromagnetic radiation so it will often pass through things like plastic and fiberglass. What all this means then is that your things like your Harrier jump jets and your submarines are really good at being undetectable by radar due to their curvature. The average family car for example has a flat metal boot lid at the back making it um, highly detectable by rear facing speed cameras but the best vehicle that a camera can detect would be a four-sided metal lorry. So how does the speed camera take a measurement of the speed of a vehicle? The camera fires at least two pulses of radio wave radiation at the speed of light at the target vehicle. It measures the time it takes for that same pulse to return back to the camera and then to measure the speed it's simply the change in position of the car over the entire time interval which is given by the shutter speed of the Gatso camera. When the distance between the object and the transmitter and the object and the receiver is the same, which is the case for speed cameras, then the power returning back to the, uh, the aerial is given by this equation. Uh, it, it, it looks very complicated, but actually there are very few things that vary here, so we assume always that the transmitted power and the gain of the antenna remain the same. Then we know that the effective area of a car is essentially the same. Right. Then we have the RCS factor, which is what we discussed earlier. And finally, the pattern propagation factor. Now this is something that's affected by the background radiation inside the atmosphere and is incredibly hard to measure. But we can assume that it does give some sort of error in the reading given by the camera, considering that electromagnetic waves interact with each other all the time. So, how do we measure the error that can occur when a speed camera takes a measurement of a vehicle speed. Well, it comes in at least two parts. Now, I have only done it to two parts, but there are many other variables that could affect the measurement. So, the first one is the actual error between the at least two measurements that the camera must take to gain a measurement of speed. So, let's begin with that one. The data I got about the speed cameras from reading police frequently asked question forums gave a camera shutter speed of 0.5 seconds. Now everything 
experimentally that is that's, that measures something controlled by a computer has an associated error of 2% everything that's just a standard error of anything controlled by a computer so let's apply that error to the time between the two measurements that the speed camera can take a car travelling at motorway speeds will have travelled 15.64 meters now the distance measured on the floor and the lines on the floor in front of the speed camera range anywhere between half a meter and two meters so I've taken an average distance of separation between those lines which are the secondary measurement for the camera as one meter as a standard experimental procedure when combining errors like this into equations so speed is distance over time so to get the error in the speed as a, as a ratio to the speed you take the square of the sum of the squares of the errors so as shown here so the, the error in the speed over the speed is equal to the square root of the error in the time over the time squared plus the error in the distance over the distance all squared now being as we've got our errors as percentage errors we can take them in the similar way so the percentage error in the speed is the same as the square root of the sum of the squares of the percentage errors in the other two variables what this means is the Gatso speed cameras just by taking a picture have a 6.7% error clearly not every car is the same in construction in shape in color uh, not the cameras out in the, in the countryside won't have the same background radiation as those in the city center for example and um, how do we account for that? Well if we look back at the equation we had first which is the uh, the power transmitted equation there are a few things that vary there so the first off is the max distance to the object okay now I have found out that radar is only really accurate to 300 yards which is anywhere from 0.9 meters which is essentially a yard up until 274 meters the pattern propagation factor that I mentioned earlier is essentially just the measure of um, the, the atmospheric general radiation in that particular area against the levels of electromagnetic radiation in free space, which is you know next to next to nothing. Um, the, the the max that this factor can be is one, and I took a minimum of 0.1, but I'm sure that it could be lower in certain areas. But that just really depends on, you know, how far away you are from a cell phone mast, how far away you are from a radio transmitter, whether your mobile phone in your pocket is on, whether the guy behind you's got his mobile phone on, anything. And finally, the scattering coefficient. Now, this governs how well the radio waves reflect back from the target vehicle to the camera. This was also the hardest to find. So my numbers for this are based from uh, iron which is a main ingredient in car body parts, let's, it's fair to say, um, at 15 centimeter radio waves. Um, and although this equation looks very confusing, the first bracket, the second bracket, and the last bracket are either constant or are so small in this, in this instance that they're not even worth considering. So we can cancel it down to just n squared minus 1 over n squared plus 2, all squared, which comes down to n minus 1 over n plus 1 all squared. The n's here referring to the reflective coefficient of whatever surface and this obviously varies for uh, a black matte car or a shiny silver car that will reflect differently so black obviously reflects less and matte reflects less than shiny so a matte black car will reflect less of the radiation back and a shiny silver car, for example, will reflect the majority, if not all, of the radiation back. So putting all this together, we can obtain a maximum and a minimum power that will be received back at the antenna uh, as a ratio against what was transmitted. So to do this, we can set everything that was transmitted equal to 1. And then everything after that will just be a ratio. So what I've done for the maximum power is I've taken the uh, maximum scattering coefficient the minimum distance and the maximum propagation factor which should give us a high number and then the minimum power I've taken everything again equal to one the minimum scattering coefficient the maximum distance and the minimum pattern propagation factor 
by then taking an average of the max power and the min power that we, we assume has been received by the antenna, dividing by what we sent out, which was 1, and times it by 100, we can get a percentage error based purely on whatever the state of the target object was and whatever the state of the background radiation in the atmosphere was at the time that this picture or this measurement was taken and we get 1.55 percent and then finally because we've been working in percentage errors it's just as easy to add the two 6.7 and 1.55 percent errors together so we get a total error based purely on the speed that the camera can take a picture and the uh, state of the vehicle that it's targeting, so whether it's black, whether it's curvy, whether it's you know a sports car, a regular car, a big sided people carrier, whatever, we get a, a, a total error of 8.25% on the speed measurement. So what does all that mean? Well in April 2017 the road enforcement agencies changed the rules about speeding fines so that now they're going to give out a band aid fine for one mile an hour of the speed limit. Now what that is essentially saying is is that at 70 miles an hour, or any mile an hour for that fact, um, they can tell the difference between 70.4 and 70.6 miles an hour, which means that they can measure to a 0.05 mile an hour accuracy. Now as a percentage, compared to our 8.25%, that is a 0.07% accuracy, which clearly can't be possible based on the variations in the surroundings or the target vehicle alone. So there you go guys, I hope that was really helpful in helping to understand firstly how speed cameras work and secondly that maybe they're just not as accurate as the police would have us think. Now I, I want to make it clear that the band B and the band C fines, not a chance. If you were caught doing that speed, it's game over. But if you were caught doing a couple of miles an hour over the speed limit, it might be worth arguing the fact. Anyway, thanks for watching guys, hit like, hit subscribe. Follow me on Facebook and check out my website at www.physicsexplained.co.uk